Welcome to our telecast today. We continue to talk about a Christian approach to Israel. Today I'm going to discuss a topic that is very controversial to some, and I promise you, you may see something in Scripture that you have never seen before. Even if you are one of these who consider themselves an expert in Bible prophecy. We are also going to hear from a Jewish rabbi, Pastor Nathan Thurber is here with me. They give us a little bit foretaste uh, from the rabbi we're going to hear it from. It's a beautiful story. Grew up in an Orthodox home and is now a Messianic believer, pastoring a, a beautiful church, doing great work in Carmel, the Galilee area of Israel. Uh, that's wonderful. I'm glad you were with me here, Nathan, as well, because you're going to inform us of the Way of Peace ministry, which is dedicated to reach Israel with the gospel. So we got lots happening. So let's get, and of course, we want to hear from you. The Grace Prayer Center information is there. You can contact me, my text phone, and all that is available but you'll see that on the bottom of the screen. So let's dig right into this subject. We established in a previous program that God works equally with Israel and with all nations to bring them to the knowledge of Christ. Christ is the Savior of all. We also talked about that we, we love Israel, and, and I think I speak for the way of peace ministry that's been going on for 17 years now. We love Israel the way that Israel's Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, loves Israel and the Jewish people. And that is a very important distinction. Jesus is our example. He came to his own, the Jewish nation, as their Messiah. Jesus told Pontius Pilate, you say correctly that I am a king. This was a clear message 2,000 years ago, and it still speaks today that Jesus is the king of the Jews. Jesus loved and loves Israel more than anyone. No matter how zealous we are, we must never think that we love Israel more than the Savior and King of Israel. Jesus warned that some would come to deceive Jewish people. And I posed this question. Could it be that well-intentioned evangelical Christians are a part of the deception of Israel? I heard a preacher recently uh, say very, very publicly that his life's mission was to support the, the modern-day state of Israel. And that's worthy, but it's hardly a gospel ministry, and he was willing to give his life for that. And, you know, some elevate the nation of Israel as if it was the fourth person in the Godhead. Some seem more eager to support the nation state of Israel than to support the gospel of Israel's Messiah. Messiah. Many are, are shocked to discover that modern-day Israel is one of the world's most liberal countries. I think we have a night scene from Tel Aviv there, you know. Israel is one of the first nations to legalize same-sex marriage. Unrestricted abortion, crime, and prostitution are common. And so people come to Israel and they, they have a view that is very quickly shattered. I'm talking about evangelical Christians. If we find that we have an Israel theology that has crept into the church, which is not in line with Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, well, then we must cast down that theology and we must bring our thoughts into alignment with Christ. Jesus is the standard for our approach and how we view the nation of Israel. You know, many Christians are deeply concerned about the borders of the nation state of Israel. The scriptures speak of the borders that God promised to Abraham and his descendants. It's quite a Genesis. You can see it on the screen there. Genesis 16, 15, Joshua 1 talks about that. And in the Genesis account, this is one we are showing, uh, you know, it, the, the, the promised land was from the river Euphrates in the north to the river of Egypt in the south. And it all sounds so clear and uncomplicated. However, hold on. Here's where you're going to hear something. When we read about the actual land that Joshua divided to the 12 tribes, those borders are very different. You see the picture there? You see that's a much smaller piece of land. And, and, and this border resembles also what we read about in Ezekiel chapter 47. You know, this is shocking news to many. The physical borders, hear me, of the promised land that God promised Abraham are not the same. Not the same as the borders that Joshua divided to the 12 tribes. The, the Genesis 15 account and the Joshua 1 account is in contrast to the actual land that is divided. You can read about it later on in the book of Joshua, chapters 13, 14, 15, and on. 
the, the land that Joshua divided is smaller than the land that was promised to Abraham. So you say, well, how is that possible? Well, you can read the Bible for yourself. So did God fulfill the promise of land to Israel? Well, we read after each tribe had received their allotment of land. So that's the smaller version. It says, the Lord gave Israel all the land which he has sworn to give their fathers. Not one of the good promises which the Lord had made to the house of Israel fail. All came to pass. So evidently, Israel, the 12 tribes, received all the land that God had promised. So what about the larger piece of land promised to Abraham? What are the exact physical borders of the land that God promised to Israel? Is it the borders promised to Abraham? Is it the borders described in Joshua chapter 1? Or is it the actual land given to the 12 tribes? I'm going to pick up that question, and I'm going to show you that map a little later on in just a moment. But now fast forward to Jesus, and then I'll come back to that. Jesus is the king of Israel. Shouldn't Jesus have been concerned and explained this dilemma that I have put before you about the geographical borders? Shouldn't Jesus be just as concerned, much as some Christians are so concerned? Yet Jesus showed no interest in this issue. Jesus knew the Old Testament scriptures, and yet he never quoted or elaborated on these. Never. Jesus, many preachers are so interested, but Jesus seems completely disinterested. And yet he's our example. We, and I'm talking about Pastor Nathan, myself, and you, we who are friends of Israel, I'm a friend of Israel, we can learn from Israel's Messiah, Jesus Christ. So how can we understand these very descriptions about the allotment of the land? Well, one explanation is that God gave the promise of a certain land in the Middle East to Abraham and his descendants, plural, not just his descendant, his descendants, that included Isaac, but also all of Abraham's descendants. Abraham had eight sons in all, one with Sarah, one with Hagar, and six more sons with Keturah, the woman he married after Sarah died. You know, Abraham was not a deadbeat dad. He didn't only care for Isaac. He loved and provided for all his sons. All of them received land and became uh, fathers of nations in their own right. Why is it again that the physical land promised to Abraham is much larger than the actual land divided to the 12 tribes of Israel, which God said that was all that he had promised them? Because the land promised to Abraham was for all his children, including Isaac, but all of Abraham's children. That included Ishmael and the others. Okay, so there you have the answer to that. But one thing is certain. Jesus ignored the issue of the geographical borders. Now, now, let's show the map again. I've been explaining this. You see, the, uh, that, that, that was the, hold it right there. That was the borders of the land that God gave uh, to the 12 tribes. You see, it, it's, it's quite small. Now, look at the other map. That is a much larger area. That's what God promised to Abraham. But I'm submitting that that was for all of Abraham's sons, not just for Isaac. Now, you see, What's amazing here is some Christian, they pay so much attention to the physical borders of Israel, an issue which Jesus or the apostles never mentioned. So this dilemma that I put, Jesus never mentioned this. And yet I'm only bringing it up because so many Christians are talking about it. The New Testament scriptures as a whole are amazingly silent. Paul's writings in Romans chapter 9 to 11, and when James talks in the book of Acts, He's talking about the spiritual restoration of Israel through Christ, not about a future nation state. After the multiplication of the bread and the fish, the people wanted to make Jesus king. Clearly, they believed that Jesus was to establish an earthly kingdom. That would have been a perfect opportunity for Jesus to address the issue of a physical kingdom. Instead, Jesus rejected their overtures and made no reference to any future nation of Israel. So I'm submitting to you that there could have been a wrong, misplaced concern that has crept into modern-day evangelical Christianity. 
We are so concerned with every piece of land in, in the Middle East, and whether this belongs to the Jewish people and this doesn't, we're so concerned. We fight over it. We go to prophecy seminars to discuss this. But it seems the one thing that concerned Israel's Messiah, the one thing that concerned the great rabbi Shaul, Saul of Tarsus, it doesn't seem like that concerns us so much. We're going to get to that video clip in a moment, but first uh, of the, from the, our friend, the rabbi and Carmel, but first I want to read uh, what Paul said in Romans 10. He said, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them, that's, he's referring to Israel, is for their salvation, for the Jewish people. I testify about the Jewish people, that they have a zeal for God zealous. And you'll see that even today among not all Jews, because many Jews are atheists, but you'll see it among certainly the Orthodox. They have a zeal, but not in accordance with knowledge, for not knowing about God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own. They didn't subject themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Paul is saying, and he says it several times, he says, my heart is so moved. I'm full of passion. And so here we are today. Could we learn from Rabbi Shaul of Tarsus? I suggest we could. Those who have been emphasizing what we call replacement Christian theology or Christian Zionism, both could learn. Both could learn. You see, replacement theology, it shows little concern for the Jewish people. Christian Zionism is more concerned about geography than about souls. There's a better way. We learn from Israel's Messiah, from Yeshua HaMashiach. And so we advocate a, a theology of one new man in Christ Jesus. And so God will work that out, whatever way the land is to be divided. But our concern, make no mistake, is to give the gospel to the Jew and to the Gentile. And Pastor Nathan, uh, that's what the Way of Peace Ministry is doing. And we have some partners and friends who support that. I know you gave a quite a lengthy description and summary of what Way of Peace is all about yesterday in our telecast. But just give us a little nugget. Uh, what is it all about? Well, it's a Christian ministry that for the last 17 years has adopted the approach that Pastor Peter has described today and yesterday on this telegast to, uh, to preach the gospel to Jews and Arabs in Israel. And we support other ministries with this like-minded attitude in the nation of Israel who are reaching Jews and Arabs with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, it, 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 there's a change going on. More and more people are discovering the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's amazing how many people in Israel uh, don't uh, know the gospel. They don't even know that Capernaum was where Jesus was. They don't know. You, you know, I want you to come with us to Israel. Taina and I are leading a tour. And so before we, we go to, to introduce you to the rabbi uh, from Carmel, Israel, uh, look at this. You will journey from where Abraham entered the promised land to Golgotha, where Abraham's blessings were provided through Christ. Is this your time for the trip of a lifetime? Join Peter and Tina Youngren on the Love Israel Tour. You'll walk where Jesus taught and healed the multitudes, where the early church was formed and where the prophets spoke. Discover secrets and fresh spiritual insights as you walk the streets, hillsides, and seashores of Israel. You will uncover life-transforming nuggets of God's unmerited grace as you are enriched by on-site teachings. Enjoy meaningful fellowship with like-minded believers on the tour and meet believers in Jesus Christ who live in Israel today. One person commented, I've been to Israel several times, but this was the very best. Pastor Peter's revelation of Jesus Christ and his knowledge of the history of Israel made this trip unique. I can't wait to go back. There is no better time than now to tour Israel. Love Israel Tour. 
For more information, please call 416-497-4940 or go online to PeterYoungren.org to receive your free information package. Discover Christ in the land of the Bible. Well, I think the seats are going to fill up fast, so let us know that you're coming. I know the airlines, they, they are wanting it to know so they can put a, a name, your name, with that seat that we have reserved. Uh, our friend Dean Morris, who you see often on this program, he, he will be the one taking all the inquiries. You are in good hands. He's been with us to Israel several times, and so avail yourself of that. Please join us for an uh, incredibly marvelous time together in Israel. Now, uh, Nathan, we're going to go to, the, to a video clip here with Rabbi Yossi. Just 30 seconds. Who is he? He grew up in an Orthodox home, uh, fell away. He discovered he didn't want anything to do with religion. Then he met uh, Jesus Christ and has a personal relationship and has been running a church, powerful church there in, in the Galilee area since the 80s. And so we're, we're, we sponsor him through Way of Peace Ministries. Now we get to hear his testimony. Yes, some of the projects he's done, we've been helping out with, and that's a privilege. Watch this. In, when I was 16 years old, I decided that... Religious, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. So I took the kippah out, out and put it in my pocket. And all the time when I was with my father, I put the kippah on now, to now respect we, him. We have a picture, I, I think it might be on the screen, of you, I think at the age of 13, you exactly. your bar, bar mitzvah. Exactly. And there you look, uh, at least from a Canadian's perspective, reasonably religious. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> in the, so when you're 13 years old, you are doing the bar mitzvah. Then came your time to go to the army, and that's a very big deal in the youth, yes. uh, for, for youth in Israel. Each young adult in the age of 18, is going for three years in the military. Now, after the army time, yes, I understand it's a, it's a habit among the youth yes. that they want to travel, even travel the world or, or yes. discover more, and, and the same for you. Yes. And this is where you came to the point where someone introduced you to the gospel of, of Jesus, Yeshua. Exactly. When I came to the Galilee, to the Sea of Galilee, I slept in a, a youth hostel, and there I met an English girl and she started to speak with me about the Lord. She started to share with me about, about the faith. So from what, from all the things that she, she told me, two things stayed in my heart, in my mind. One, a young English girl knows about my nation. She loves my nation. How can it be? We know that all the world, it's against us. And this girl love us. And not just that she loves us, she's interesting in our history. Mm. Okay. So this was an open door for me, in a way, to the second things. And the second things that stayed in my heart, she spoke about Jesus as her personal savior, that she have relationship with him, that he's speaking with her, she's speaking with him, is directing her in the right path. So for you as a secular Jew, it was not some tremendous revelation on prophetic fulfillment, how Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. It, it was really very, very down to earth. Exactly. She loved the people of Israel and she had a personal relationship with Jesus. Exactly, exactly. And I'm a secular, but I have a, a religious background. I know the religious. I know that as a religious, you don't have this kind of personal relationship. God is far away. Uh, that's interesting. We're going to pick up that uh, story in a moment where uh, uh, Rabbi Joshi is going to tell more about how he encountered Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But isn't that striking? Love drew him. Mm -hmm. And it is a miracle with so few Jewish believers, uh, less than 2%. And that, that can, that's constitutes an unre unreached people of the world. And so that is a remarkable story. It's a yeah. miracle. And, and the last 10 seconds, what he said there, that uh, to have a personal relationship with God is so foreign to the thinking. Well, let's go back to the interview and hear more from Rabbi Josie. An Arab young girl, a in the late teenagers or the be beginning of her 20, she's coming from a Catholic background. 
she came to know the Lord in a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. Her parents threw her from her home. Wow. And who pick her up and adopt her? A Messianic Jew. Mm. So she was living with that Messianic Jew in, a, in, a play, in, in, in the same city, it was Haifa. She was working in the hospital and the same words that the English girl was speaking to me in English, this girl now speaking to me in Hebrew. So as is often the case, the Lord is working through several people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What is the reaction of your parents and your family and okay. former friends and yeah, yeah. Uh, your whole uh, society where you come from? So I came to my mom one evening and I am sharing with her, this is what that I believe. And my mom said, Yossi, you're still my son. This is fine. Okay. One. <laughs> then, how to speak with my father. A few weeks, two weeks later, it went. And then I'm speaking with my father. When my father understood, he stopped speaking with me. Mm. Now we are in the same home. In actual fact, he want to throw me away from home. My mom didn't let him do this. So it was a difficult time with my father. Well, of course, what happens to in a situation like that, he also could feel pressure from society. What did I do wrong in raising my son? Didn't I teach him correct? Didn't yeah. I? So for him, it, it, it's also a, a yeah, yeah. pressure I can, on the whole family. I can understand. I can understand the situation. And I can send that he could lose his job. Now, what was my father? I didn't mention it before, but he was a, a cantor. It means singing in the synagogue, teaching kids to bar mitzvah, mm -hmm. a, doing circumcision, keeping kosher in a supermarket, and, and many other kind of religious things like that. And his, all of his income is coming from a religious. Mm -hmm. from, and if they know that his son is a not walking with uh, the God of Isaac and, and uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, oh, wow, he can lose his job. I, th I think that gives a, a, an insight into how dramatic it is when a Jewish person comes to Jesus Christ. It was, uh, it was, it was life-changing. And what I love about that story, if you mentioned, heard at the beginning, it was an Arab girl that shared Jesus with him. And we see, mm -hmm. you know, you hear about the conflict, Arabs and Jews, and yet here around mm -hmm. the person of Jesus, an Arab girl sharing Jesus with this young Jew. Of course, it was a mess Messianic Jew that took that young Arab girl in when she was herself kicked out from her own family. And so what a beautiful story it is. Yeah, the price that people pay, and uh, of course, I know that it can be so in, in, in Canada and the United States as well, but most of us didn't have to pay that kind of price uh, to say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And, and so it's a privilege to work with people, and we have helped in Carmel there through the Way of Peace Ministry, uh, some of their outreaches, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, like anywhere else, when there's congregations that come in Israel, they are tempted just like they are in Canada to become very intro-focused just on, on their own group. And so we are constantly trying to say, let's reach more people with the gospel. Mm -hmm. And it has grown in, in an upcoming telecast this week on this program. We'll be sharing he'll, more about the church and how it grew and the church that he That's pastors. That's right. We have a clip, is. I believe, where he tells uh, about exactly. that. Exactly. And it's one of the leading churches in the area from that remarkable story of life transformation of that young Jewish boy. Here is what Way of Peace is doing. Believers are often shocked to discover that in Israel, where it all began, the light of the gospel is very dim. Many Jewish people, born and raised in Galilee or Jerusalem, have no idea that those places are associated with Jesus Christ. In a region marked with conflict, the only hope for peace is found in the Prince of Peace. 4,000 years ago, Abraham's two feuding sons, Ishmael and Isaac, were reunited at the grave of their father, and so today, True reconciliation between the warring factions can only be found at another tomb, the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. Hundreds of thousands of Taurus flock to Israel to see the holy sites, and still the people remain untouched by the gospel. Sadly, just a few Christians feel the need to give the gospel to the Jewish people. In contrast, the Apostle Paul stated that he wished he could be accursed if that meant that his countrymen would be saved. 
What is our response? Since 2005, Wave Peace Ministries has stood with gospel workers across Israel in a prophetic outreach to Israel. The Lord told Saul of Tarsus to bear the name of Jesus before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. That mandate is still for us today. Way of Peace is focused on the people. We lift up the hands of Jewish and Arab pastors and evangelists who are giving their lives for the great cause of Jesus. The ministries include church planting, evangelism centers, social media outreach, gospel literature, leadership training, and humanitarian help and care. Your help is urgently needed. Become a monthly partner or give your very best gift. Thank you for your response. When you become a $30 a month partner or give a special gift of $300, you will receive a beautiful replica painting of Jesus with the engraving. Our judgment fell on him. Call now, 1-416-745-1820 or go to www.wayofpeace.net and give your very best today. Take action today to love Israel just like Jesus. Israel's Messiah, love the people. This is so important. This is the heart of Jesus Christ. If you want additional teaching, uh, my CD or DVD is available there. You see that on the screen. And uh, we want to say thank you to everyone who will join in partnership with the Way of Peace Ministry, whether you share a one-time gift or you become a monthly partner. And Nathan, again, for people who say, I want to do something for Israel, how do they respond? Well, please call the phone number or go to the website, particularly the phone number, and talk to an operator and monthly partners. You heard it in the commercial, $30 a month or any amount that you choose. But monthly partnership is so key so that these gospel workers whom Way of Peace supports can be can know that support is given. And as we mentioned, there'll be we will send you this beautiful, it's a big picture that we'll send to you his judgment. It's a it's applicable because the focus is Jesus Christ and sharing that with Jews and Arabs in the nation of Israel. So, Pastor Peter, thank you. Yeah, we're always bringing the focus on to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And so, would you respond right now? This may be the only time this year that we're making this special appeal for Israel. So, I really, you're not going to hear it again and again. Would you help us? Thank you so much. And remember that you are loved by God. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A 2W1 or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.